I have heard some very important testimonies about renewable energy and what has been done in the United States. Uh, perhaps I'd like to talk about the threat of global climate disaster that is no longer up for debate, and therefore um, renewable energy becomes a must and not just the question mark. The majority of scientists are in agreement. Governments have previously been reluctant to accept this reality. However, notwithstanding all this sobering information, the agreements reached in Bali were extremely weak and inadequate. And as you know, the role that the United States played in Bali was not the most encouraging. Climate change is the defining challenge of our age. How to meet that challenge while dealing with the already devastating consequences of floods, droughts, and rising temperatures remain the great unanswered question, and the time to answer is running out. In its final report, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change stated that the world must reverse the growth of greenhouse gas emissions by 2015 to avert a global climate disaster. If there is no action before 2012, that's too late, said Rajendra Pachuri, who headed the panel, who shared the Nobel Prize in October with former U.S. President Al Gore. What we do in the next two to three years will depend and will determine our future. But what should we do? I used to believe that reduced energy consumption was an important first step, accompanied by research and investment into energy efficiency and renewable energy sources. I used to believe that it will be enough to encourage more localized lifestyle, reducing the need for overburden, pollutant transport ne networks. But after reading the most recent scientific findings, I have come to realize that even if we begin each of these practices in earnest tomorrow, it is simply not enough. The time has come to expose the myth that we can avert climate catastrophe by small measures and a sticky plaster measures. In the recent assessment by the highly respected climate scientist James Hansen of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, he suggested that the IPCC report itself an alarming reading might even be absurdly optimistic. For example, the often touted safe figure of 3.6 Fahrenheit increase in average global temperatures is in fact not safe at all. We have already experienced a rise of 1.31 Fahrenheit in average global temperatures. A rise of 3.6 Fahrenheit is three times that. Agreeing to a 3.6 Fahrenheit target does not avoid the possibility of catastrophe. On top of this, the apparently bold target of reducing emissions by 50% does not guarantee that the temperature increase will be limited to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Hansen estimates sea levels rises of four to five meters this century due to melting ice in Greenland and Antarctica. He described how the IPCC report fails to take geological records into account and ignores the so-called albedo flip property of water. The albedo flip property of ice water provides a powerful trigger mechanism, a climate forcing that flips the albedo of a sufficient portion of an ice sheet that can spark a cataclysm. Hansen is telling us that the poles do not melt in a linear fashion, but rather in burst, and that if the, global, if the globe warms up in just a few degrees, it might be enough to trigger a catastrophic ice sheet collapse. Such a collapse will not only drown most of the world's centers of population, but will itself fuel further climate change, since less ice means less heat reflected back into space. The Earth's climate is remarkably sensitive to global forcing. Positive and amplifying feedbacks predominate. These allow the entire planet to be with so between climate state. Recent greenhouse gas emissions place the Earth perilous close to dramatic climate change that could run out of control. If we go beyond the point where human intervention can no longer stabilize the system, then we precipitate unstoppable runaway climate change that will set in motion a major extinction event comparable to the five other extinction crises that the Earth has previously experienced. 
This clearly demonstrates what the World Future Council, the organization I chair, is advocating. If we are serious about averting climate change catastrophe, we must think in revolutionary terms and transform our way of life, restoring rather than destroying life on Earth. We must embark upon a global renewable energy revolution if we are to achieve the necessary carbon reduction by 2020. We must replace our carbon-driven economy with a renewable energy economy. There is no time to debate half measures any longer. The period in which they may have been effective has long been passed. We have experienced an industrial revolution. We have experienced a technological revolution. It will take a global renewable energy revolution, similar in scale and consequence to those two, to avert catastrophe. As Hermann Scheer, member of the German Bundestag and the World Future Council said, this cannot be achieved with the method of talk globally, postpone nationally, but only with the method of sing globally, act lo locally, regionally, and nationally. The beginning of this movement may already be underway. Some nations have begun to act, even finding great financial opportunities along the way. In Germany, pushes to where energy efficiency and renewable energy sources are spurring the economy. By 2020, every building must meet high levels of energy efficiency. The feed-in tariffs legislation, which guarantees a prefer preferential price for energy produced, will create 2,050,000 50, jobs. Mr. Jagger, uh, could you please um, summarize the statement? Sure. It will be crucially important for the United States, perhaps led by individual state, to adopt feeding tariffs as a significant way by which to accelerate the introduction of renewable energy. The U.S. cannot continue to rely on power in the city, its industries, its farm, and its transport system by energy resources for which there is ever greater global competition. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.